Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim So in this video, I want to talk about the finance, uh, definition of finance, uh, corporate finance, and goals of corporate finance. So uh, before to talk about the definition of corporate finance, I thought that it is better to first talk about the definition of finance itself. If someone asks you, for example, what do you mean by finance? Uh, you are a specialization in finance, so at least you have to understand something about the definition at all, right? Why? Because it is not, it's not a good reason to only define what is finance. You have to understand the contents, but uh, for the time being, at least people may ask, for example, what is finance? You have to say a something for them. There are a few definitions. I have brought three definitions. You can remember any one for yourself. For example, I have defined finances like this. Finance may be defined as the art and science of managing money and other assets. A simple definition for finance is, finance can be called as art and science of managing money. Managing money means, of course, managing of bank account, managing of cash account, managing of account receivable, of course, managing of check, managing of debit card, credit card, and so on. Money has a elaborated meaning. At the end of this chapter, I have provided you the resource regarding money. What is money? What are different types of money? What are near money? What are, for example, we can say currency and so on, different types of currency. All those sort of informations are provided for you. So one of the simple definitions uh, for finance can be defined in this way that finance is the art and science of managing money why it is called art and why it is called science it is called art because you need to apply your skills of course and expertise for management of money and why it is called science of course you have to apply the the, the techniques you have to apply the formula you have to apply the methods yeah, and so on and then of course you can manage money so in finance only the techniques are not enough so we have to have some knowledge some skills and expertise as well some experience so understanding the technique is not enough for us so that is why we can say finance is the art and science of managing money how to manage money how to manage account receivable how to manage for example assets how to manage bonds how to manage Gold, everything basically can come under under money. The second definition for finance can be finance may be defined as the procurement of fund and effective utilization of fund. This is also a kind of definition for finance. Finance is the procurement and effective utilization. Point number one, you have to procure, you have to provide fund. And point number two, you have to utilize it properly. If you provide it fund and you have used it effectively, it means you know finance. So that's the second definition. The third definition, which is somehow like the second one, is it is the management of flow of money through an organization. Flow means movement. So management of flow of money means, of course, it is the management of flow of or movement of money into the business Move, movement or flow can be two movement can be movement in and can be movement out so what is finance finance is the management of inflow of money as well as the outflow of money so simply we can say finance talks something about money only it is the management of money even you can say for example finance is the management of money finance is the procurement of money and use of money Finance means managing the inflow and outflow of money. So this is our simple definition. You can go for your reference book, find out some more points for this. After the definition of corporate finance. What is corporate finance? So these are a few points mentioned here. Definition, few definition. The financial activities related to running a corporation. Of course, there are several brands of finance. For example, financial management. Financial management is a subject which is basically can be used for any form of organization. Can be used for sole proprietorship, can be used for partnership, as well as can be used for corporation. Right? But of course, the branch of finance which is uh, wholly allocated for corporations, so 
So this can be called as what? Corporate finance. So if we want to define corporate finance, simply we can define in this way as well. It is a branch of finance which is allocated for corporations to manage the financial activity of corporations. So any branch of finance which is allocated for corporation to manage the day-to-day -day activity of the corporation can be called as what? To manage the financial activity of the corporation can be called as a corporate finance. Why corporation? Why separate branch for corporation, not separate branch for partnerships, or not separate branch of finance for sole proprietorship? Because the nature of the corporation is different. It is only the corporation that owner is separate and business is separate. It is only the corporation that issues share in the market, right? It is only the corporation that transfer ownership from one person to another person. So these are, there are several features for the corporation. So that is why a specific branch of uh, finance is allocated for this group of companies to manage their financial activities. So if someone asks you, for example, what is corporate finance, you have to say, finance means management of inflow and outflow of money. And that branch of finance, which is allocated to manage the activity of the business, can be called as a corporate finance. And of course, uh, one small thing are mentioned here, somehow like definition, corporate finance is prim primary concern with the maximizing shareholder value through the long-term and short-term financial planning and the implementation of various strategies. So it's a branch of finance which is allocated for corporations uh, to make policy for them, to make a plan, financial plans, long-term financial plan or short-term financial plan, plan to achieve the goal of the corporation and increase the value of the organization, right? But leave this definition so simply you can say it's a branch of finance which manage the financial activity of the corporation. After this, a uh, few points are mentioned here as a goal of corporation, but also you can consider it as a goal of corporate finance also. Why? Because the, uh, the corporate finance is also for the corporation. So whatever is in the goal for corporation, it can be a goal for corporate finance as well. So let us say the first one. What is the first? The first one is to maximize the shareholder value. The first objective or goal of corporate finance is to increase the value of the company in order to increase the wealth of the shareholders. Wealth of the shareholders can be increased only if the price of the share increase in the market, right? Who are the shareholders? Shareholders are the person to purchase the share of the business. So when we can increase the wealth of these people, the wealth of these people can be increased only if the share, share price or market price of those shares increased. For example, Ahmad purchased the share of ABC company for $10, for example. And he keeps this one, for example, for two years. So a company make a good performance. Good performance in the company means, for example, company may produce good quality. They apply their policies properly. They manage the day-to-day -day activities and so on. And finally, suppose they satisfy the customers as well. And after satisfaction of all those things, suppose the company make more profitability. When the company make more profitability, of course, in this case, uh, they will divide more profit for the shareholders. If they divide more profit for the shareholders, of course, the demand for share increase in the market. Why? Because when you receive a good profit from the business, you may encourage the other people also to please go in this company and make investment. Why? Because I have invested, for example, I have received a huge amount of profit. When you talk about this company to others, so others also will get encouraged to invest in this business. If they want to make investment in the business, so they will go in the market to purchase the share of the business. So if everyone try to in purchase the share of the business, so demand for share will increase in the market. If demand increase for the share as per the law of uh, demand and supply, so if demand increase, market price will go up. If supply is constant, so definitely in this case, supply of share will be constant in in the market so if demand increase market price will increase if market price increase value of the share increased if value of the share increase wealth of the shareholder increase so the person who purchased shares of the company tiers back for ten dollar 
Now he may sell it, for example, for $20, right? So if he purchased already, suppose, 1 lakh shares of this company, so check the profitability. So this can be called as what? As a wealth maximization. So one of the goal of corporation is to increase the value of the share in order to make more profit for owner of the business, which we call it shareholder. That is one case. We will discuss, inshallah, in details later on. Point two, to assign, to design an optimum capital structure for the company. Although for this one, we have a separate chapter. But for the time being, what do you mean by capital structure? Capital structure means, of course, you may know something, for example, something from financial management uh, regarding a source of funds, that we have two sources of funds. Source of fund can be debt and source of fund can be equity. Now the question arises, for example, if the company want to make a combination of both of them, so how to combine that one? How much of debt and how much of equity, right? If you have understood that how much of debt and how much of equity is better for your company, that one can be called as what? As an optimum capital structure. So one of the goal of the corporation for the company, a goal of corporate finance for the company is to have a optimum capital structure for the company. So optimum capital structure means best combination of source of fund to generate more profitability for the business. Capital structure means a structure of the capital. A structure of the capital means combination of different parts. Different part means different source of fund. How much to take, how much a uh, loan to take from the market how many shares to sell in the market how many how much how many bonds to sell in the market how much to introduce by owner and so on the combination of different source of fund can be called as a capital structure but the best combination can be called as a optimum capital structure this is one of the goal of financial uh, corporate finance point number three is to procure finance at a reasonable cost and at the time when it is needed so this is also very important. Point number three is to procure finance at reasonable cost. So if you want to raise finance from the market for the corporation, the cost should be reasonable. The cost should not be too much high. Reasonable cost means something which is standard in the market. That one should be for your business, right? So if a standard is, for example, 10 percentage, you raise, for example, for 12 percentage, so it is not a reasonable, so definitely it is... Uh, it is, it's of course costly for the business and finally you may suffer loss. The one case. And second thing, one thing, it should be reasonable and the next thing, it should be of course at the proper time. So funds should be raised at the exact time when it is needed, not before the requirement, not after the requirement. Time is very important for us. Point number four, to ensure effective utilization of funds. After raising of funds, so you have to use it properly. First of all, even basically in the field of finance, we should go for the utilization, first of all. First of all, we have to see, for example, so where is the need for fund? When there is a need for fund, then you have to go and raise in the market. Before raising of fund, you should understand the source of the source of fund as well as the need for the fund. So if there is no need for the fund, please do not raise it. When you raise it, so please make sure that it is properly utilized. Properly utilization of funds simply means investment of funds. For example, you have invested one lakh to the business, so you have to take the maximum advantage of this one. So as much as most profit you generate from the prof from the capital, it means you utilize it in the best way, right? So that's called what utilization. Utilization simply basically goes for the investment. So you have to make a proper investment for the corporation. C number one, maximum profit. Number two, best combination. Number three, raise fund at the time when it is needed. Uh, of course, at a reasonable cost, you have to use it properly. Uh, these are the objective. Point number five, to maintain liquidity of the firm to avoid insolvency. Always, there should be enough money in the business. A business should not be without money. If a business is without money, so this condition can be called as well insolvency so always there should be enough money in the business to run the day-to-day -day operation and of course there should be enough money to pay the obligation of the business without any problem without any delay or difficulties 
so if this is so it means this is one of the goal of the objective that we are going to achieve it right it is like an individual person that individual should not be without money as much as possible so if you go for example in the market and there is no rupees or afghani in your hand in your pocket so definitely you can be called the insolvent so the same thing can be in the case of the company although the company may have enough assets fixed assets and so on but there is no liquid asset liquid asset means cash liquid asset means bank accounts and so on always these types of assets should be available in the business point number six to protect bondholders interest so we should protect the interests of the bondholders as well it means we should not consider our own profitability bondholders also our stakeholders we should take or we should protect the economic interests of these people as well how we can protect the economic interests of these people we can protect the economic interests of these people by uh, for example uh, providing them their interest on the exact time and of course uh, by repayment repaying their loans at the time when it is needed so two things we have to repay their loan we have to pay their interest when it is required and of course the next is to maximize uh, customer satisfaction customer satisfaction also can be one of the goal of the corporate finance although you may think that customers belong to uh, the marketing section so they have to satisfy no it is linked with the finance as well for example uh, providing time for them to pay their their credit in the future it means selling something on credit for these people it is only the permission of finance uh, providing some kinds of discount for these people right all these kinds of uh, things that that can give a kinds of monetary benefit for the customer is from the finance departments marketing cannot do anything so they're only just to uh, apply our policies basically so point number eight is the next one to fulfill environmental responsibility so it is not only our responsibility to make profit for the for the shareholders to increase their profitabilities and so on so environment is also our our uh, stakeholders so we have to be careful for this one we should not create any pollution so we have to do our corporate social responsibilities we have to for example provide food for the people we have to provide for example shelters we have to provide clothes so we have to provide for example uh, we have to build uh, for example some schools some hospitals for the particular locality and the last one is uh, very important also to follow ethical behavior so ethics are also to be followed in your business while making profit while considering the customer satisfaction so while doing anything of course you have to be careful about the ethics as well for example do not exploit the employees do not exploit the customers do not for example we can say if it the tax of the government do not escape for example corporate social responsibilities right so be careful while determining the selling price all those points that we have to do ethically and these are not legally required these are ethically required for you that you have to do for the society for the companies for the employees for the government for the society and for all the stakeholders can be called as the ethical behavior so thank you please go and watch the videos in my YouTube channel by the name of Mohibullah Azamani.